Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Hey, my brothers, hey, my brothers, hey, how y'all doing today, brother? Hey, did you guys know that you are the gods of this planet? Did you, do you, are you guys okay with the oppression that our people go through? Hey, my brother, huh? What what you say, bro? You mixing up what it is? What are you asking? You an Israelite according to the Holy Bible. You blacks, you Hispanics that's walking up and down here on Howard and Pulaski, you are the children of Israel according to the Holy Bible. And it's high time you wake up up out of your sleep, black man. It's high time you wake up out of your sleep, black woman, Hispanic man, Hispanic woman. It's time for you guys to keep God's commandments. Because look at what I'm seeing. Well, since we've been here since what, 6 o'clock, we arrived on this corner at 6 o'clock. All I've been seeing all day is my people walking up and down the streets like zombies. Right. Y'all okay with the conditions that you're living in? That's right. But God got a better plan in store for you That's if you right. go back to him. Give me the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, and start at verse 1. Because I see the valley of dry bones. You brothers and sisters are walking up and down the street like you are, you actually are dead, but you're not physically dead. You guys are spiritually dead. We're going to see what God got to say. God got your number. My brother right here with the, uh, with the um, brown shirt. I'll let him see what he, bring that brother to the cap. Read that when you get it. The book of Ezekiel. Hey, you sound like work. Everybody's been going into their car. Damn. Okay. This, the book of, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37 and verse 1. Bring it out. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. So listen good, black man. Listen good, white Hispanic man. Read it again. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. So the hand of the Lord God is upon a man in his purpose. Why is the hand of the Lord God upon us? Because he stopped everything that we was doing and he said, go and preach it to this rebellious ass people. Right, right, right. You blacks and Hispanics who don't care nothing about God. Right. But guess what? Soon as you get in trouble, guess who the first person you're going to call on? God. Right. Guess who the first person you're going to call on? God. Right. As soon as that judge throw 30 years your way, you're going to be praying and begging on your knees right. to the God of this Bible. That's right. Right. But guess what? The God of the Bible is calling you right now. Right, Which right. one of y'all gonna stand up for the evil that's right. going on in the community? Yeah. Oh, are y'all okay with that? Are y'all okay with the evil that's going on out here in the community? Yeah. Which one of you men gonna stand up and be men? Right. And take right. back your community. That's right. Take back your household yeah. and put it in order. Right. Put the woman in subjection unto you and put her in order. Right. It's gonna take a strong man to do that. Breathe. And set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And he said, the Lord God is upon him. And he set him down in the midst of the valley that is full of bones. Right. The Lord of the hand God is upon us. And because he stopped us from everything that we could have been doing. But he said, no, go out here and preach to those dry bones. Right. Yeah, Guess yeah. what? You bones, that's you black man. You are the bones of you black women. Them bones is you Hispanic man and Hispanic woman. Right. Okay? Because guess what? You guys are walking up and down the street. You're not physically dead, but you're spiritually dead. You're dead until the point of who you are according to the Bible. Right. We ask our people that all day. Who are you in the Bible? Because when Jesus Christ cracked that sky, the black Messiah, he ain't coming back for African Americans. That's right. He ain't coming back for Moorish Americans. He ain't coming back for Negroes. Right. What? He coming back for the children of Israel. That's so right. I got a question to you, my brother. Who are you according to the Bible? Messiah. Who? Messiah. The Messiah? Well, who are you, my brother? I don't, I don't, I don't get into that book. I don't know. I, I believe it's all lies. You believe it's all lies? I understand that. 
You are, you are exactly right. Somebody give me the um the, 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 the sign with the uh the, with the lines on it. I know exactly where you're coming from, brother, because I was once on this side of the coin as well. And I but the well, something happened though, right? And we're gonna show you real quick because who is this? This is why you believe his lies partially. Who is this? Who the world analogy says? Someone that don't look like me. Right, exactly. Good, very good. So look, but who is who the world acknowledges as? Jesus. The world say this is Jesus Christ, right? Uh, paints. Somebody painted that picture. Oh, uh, no, no, no. So yeah, these are paintings. You know what? These are paints because during the time of the Renaissance era, you had uh, Leonardo da Vinci. He took, he took, he took the painting and gave us. Uh, who you believe? He, hold on, my brother. Hold on. I'll tell you in a second. So hey, hey, hey. So Leonardo da Vinci took the painting. And then he painted his son, which is uh, which is uh, Cesar Borgia. All right, is that the man-made religion? So this is basically what I'm getting at. Is this is why you believe that the Bible is last because it's nothing that this don't look like you. So when you open the Bible, how do they how do they describe Christ in the Holy Bible? Bronze, bronze skin, wool hair. Right. So from that point right there, you knew that. But then you see this, and you was like, to hell with that Bible because it's lies in there. Lies don't say one thing and then say another. How my grandmother and my mother go to church every Sunday, and they worship God on Sunday, but then they come home and do all this evil in the household. Right. Those things, you're not the only one, brother. We've seen that growing up, and we knew something was a contradiction, right? So now we're going to get you the contradiction, because when you read the Bible, Jesus Christ looked like this according to the Holy Bible. Right. This is a more accurate depiction of Christ, way more than this is. So what happens? We've been told religious. That's what we've been taught. Because we're going to the Bible. Let me um, Jeremiah real quick. Because you know Jesus Christ is black, right? Right. So we know Jesus Christ is a black man. But let's see the rest of the prophets in the Bible and how they look. Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 21. Read this real quick. Jeremiah 8 and 21 first verse. Read. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 21. I know you good, my brother. What's your name? Wood, my name is Nehemiah Wood. We're going to read, we call you to read it. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 8 and verse 21. Yeah. You read out the Holy Bible, Wood, read. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. I am black. What did Jeremiah say? I am black. What color is the prophet Jeremiah? I am black. I am read. Black. Black Astonishment has taken hold of me. He said, for the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. That's why you see us, for the hurt of the people, of our people, we hurt. Right. You understand? But he also, in that same scripture, gave you a description how he looked. He said, I am black. Right. You understand that? Right. So when you read this Holy Bible, we can go all day and show you that the prophets in this Bible are black men, they are not white. That's right. You understand? That's why it never resonated with your spirit. That's why you think there's a lot of lies. But what, ha what did happen? Give me that sign. Bring that sign back up. Because this is what's happened to us, Wood. I want you to listen good. When you talk about the religion of Baptist, most of our parents grew up Baptist. The African-American household, our mothers and our grandmothers, they grew up in the Baptist religion majority. So who made the Baptist religion? A white man by the name of John Smith. He came up and created the Baptist religion in 1608. So Wood, you look like you're an intelligent man. You know from history. Where were our people at in 1906? 1906? Where were we at? 1608, excuse me. 1608. Because that's when he came up with the, uh, the, the religion. In 1608, where were our people at? Yeah, we were back in Africa. Not in, the, not in the United States. Okay, and in, 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 in 1608, that was right around the time when there was uh, the transatlantic slave trade was forming. Yeah. Okay, so when he came up with that religion, we and, and it manifests all the way into today. That was a lie that was created right before our enslavement, right before the ships landed on the shores of America. He formed that religion. Our, our Hispanic brothers and sisters was already under subjection unto them during the uh, the conquest with the conquistadors and so forth in the 1400s, okay? So they was already subjected to those people, okay? So now, you talk about Joseph Smith with the moron, I mean, excuse me, the Mormon religion. Joseph Smith, 1830, where were we at? 1830, now we were slaves. We were slaves. So this, you remember, when we was in slavery, they beat us and told us we could not read. Look, y'all are familiar with the history of the, uh, y'all seen that movie, uh, what's it called, Roots? Roots, right? So when you when you when you see the roots, a lot of that was um, historically accurate. A lot of our people we they learned what they taught us. Right. And then we couldn't we weren't able to read. If we got caught reading, they would literally beat us. Or speaking in our language. Right. Which was uh, originally was Hebrew. We right. never spoke uh 
We never spoke the English language. You understand what I'm saying? But they beat a language in us, they beat a name on us, right. and they forced us to work first with their customs. Right. Right. That's why you celebrate birthdays today. That's why you celebrate uh, Easter. This is why you celebrate uh, uh, Christmas. Uh, Christmas. Christmas. New Year's. Valentine's. You understand Valentine's Day. Those are never our customs. Right. You understand? If you said if you guys celebrate any of those things, stop it. Because that was never our custom. Right. But then it's talking about Ellen G. White in the uh, the uh, Adventist religion. 1863, we was in slavery. Charles T. Russell, Jehovah Witness. 1872, we was in slavery. Charles Perham, the Pentecostal faith. 1905, 1901 is right around the time they uh, abolished slavery. Gee. You understand? But we still, they had things like sharecropping. We were still at a lower state. You understand? That's they right. us religion. Now, with that being said, give me the lines. Drop that, give me the lines, two and eight. Bring it up. I want to show you something. But this is going to talk about this way before those religions was established. I want you to understand that, Wood. When this Bible was written by the holy man of God, which was black man, that was way before that time. So what did Paul warn the Israelites when the time would come around? Read this. This is the book of Colossians, chapter 2 and verse 8. Beware! 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 Oh, Paul is saying beware. To beware is what? When you beware something. Huh? To be alive. To be alone. To be alive. To be aware is to be alive. Right. To be alive and to be alone. Meaning, look, look, something's going to happen. Right? Read. Beware! Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Listen, you know what Paul, the black man, Paul just said? He said, when you begin, beware, lest any man spoil you. Lest any man spoil you. Who spoiled the black man over here in America? The so called white man spoiled us. For what? Through philosophy. Through what? Through philosophy. This, this right here, this is not true right here, my brother, is a philosophy. When you worship and go to church on Sunday and you pray then, that's just a philosophy. Right. Nowhere in the Bible did our forefathers and foremothers pray then and thought they were praising God. Hold on, my brother, let me, let me deal with this and I get your point. So it said, through philosophy, read, and vain deceit, and vain deceit, Mr. Reed, after the traditions of men. After what? After the traditions of men. So the customs that you black men keep in today's time, you are following the traditions of men. That's Read. right. After the rudiments of the world. And all of y'all are following the rudiments of this world. Right. All you guys are in the rudiments of this world. Right. If you celebrating your birthday, you are following the rudiments of this world. Right. If you celebrate Valentine's Day, Easter, Mother's, Mother's Day, Christmas, Christmas, any of those man-made traditions, you are in the rudiments of the world, and Paul told us, don't do that. That's right. right. And not after Christ. And everything you've been told over here since you got those slave ships, it's not, not been after the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Right. 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 What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role